today. It is my first time to be making, shooting, and editing my own vlog for my YouTube channel. If you are new to this channel, I am Aya Parabla. I am a certified meditation and mindfulness coach, and also a dance artist and energy healer. And in this YouTube channel, I usually share how-to videos um, that are ways for me to share movement, meditation, and mindfulness tips to the YouTube world. However, for today, there's going to be a very special and different video. This Surprise! is entitled A Day in the Life of a Dance Artist Turned Energy Healer. Now, maybe you were wondering what energy healing is, or you have tried several or one energy healing session and just want to learn more about energy healing, or you feel like you're being called to be an energy healer yourself. Well, in any case, keep watching this video as this may give you a glimpse of what energy healing is about and what my day usually looks like as an energy healer. So first, what is energy healing? And before that, what is energy? We know from science that energy can neither be destroyed nor created. Energy is just there and it could be directed, transmuted, or transformed. So coming from that idea, energy is in everything. Like for example, when we see a person walk in the room and they have strong energy or strong presence and we feel that. Or when you know we've had an hour of conversation with a friend who's going through a very difficult time and we can really feel their low energy, like feeling some sadness or rage or even despair. Then we come home also feeling some form of low energy. And so energy is something we don't see, but it's something that we feel or that we sense. And so when I talk about energy healing, it is coming from this premise that everything has energy, but also everything is energy before it materializes into something more tangible that we can touch, we can see, we can taste, we can smell. Energy healing is an alternative or complementary to Western medicine, wherein it's a form of healing that affects or moves or inspires change you know, in the energy body of a person or our subtle energy systems. When we say energy body, that could be composed of the seven chakras and also including our auric field. So this is just a very broad explanation of what energy healing is. Um, there are many types of energy healing practice. One of them and the main thing that I use is Reiki energy healing, which has its lineage from ancient Japan. Um, and it uses um, very light touch therapy to balance the chakras. Um, I also draw from Donna Eden's energy medicine wherein she's inspired by very simple movements in the body that connects with realigning, um, re-enlivening also energy meridians or, or points in the body. And I also draw inspiration and influence from Jeffrey Allen who is a spiritual teacher and also an energy healer who just basically calls what he does energy healing is a very broad term but also borrows from um, Western medicine, Western concepts, and also Eastern concepts um, that mainly uses visualization, creative visualization, and meditation to get the energy moving, old and stagnant, stale energy out of our system and replacing it with stronger, more charged, more positively charged energies in the body. Now, as an energy healer, I really need to take care of my own energies. My clients usually come here where I live in La Union and we have a meditation room wherein I do one and a half hours of one-on-one -on -one session and in that energy healing session I sometimes play crystal singing bowl or give them sound baths or that I do Reiki energy healing on them or I pull tarot cards and tarot cards or tarot reading is another form of energy healing for me because it's reading the energy in the present moment and giving some form of guidance or direction through the cards, through the messages of the cards, how you can redirect your energy to a desired outcome that you like. So my daily routines, my morning routines are super important to me to keep my energies balanced, um, high, good, and just overall resourced from the inside so that I could hold that space for other people that I see on a regular basis. Very, very important part of my day is my morning. I really believe that starting the day right is important because that will set the tone for my energy for the rest of the day. So as soon as I wake up, I try to connect with my breath, maybe take three slow deep breaths and then just be grateful. That's kind of a practice that I'm practicing in the last year to before I stand up or sit down from the bed to just take a 
deep, slow breath and just say thank you. Thank you for another day. Wow, this is a new morning. Thank you. I usually just turn to my partner afterwards and I just say, I love you. Say it good morning or I give him a very light kiss on the head. If I don't do that, I make sure that I turn to him and I say, I love you. Thank you. <laughs> and then I get up, I open the door from our bedroom, I immediately go out, open our curtains one by one so that our indoor plants are all gonna get the yummy morning sun, early morning sun. And then after that, I immediately go out and I feed our seven cats who live outdoor, just outside our, outside our home. Um, after feeding the cats, I simply water the whole garden outside. And then after this, I go inside our home again. I wash my face, I brush my teeth, and also I put on makeup. Like this, wearing my makeup in the morning is like being ready for the day. It's like being ready to work, being ready to face people, being ready to show up for myself. I feel much better and more confident and more able to show up fully when I have like, you know, some makeup and I feel prettier than usual. <laughs> And then in the morning, it's very, very important that I squeeze in some movement practice. Um, sometimes it's yoga, sometimes that is a workout hit or pilates or I use very small hand, handheld um, light weights. I usually follow someone from YouTube when I do this, but more often than not, I listen uh, in the last month and kind of been consistent with it to Dr. Joe Dispenza because I'm in love with his work around uh, heart math and heart and brain coherence and how um, clear intention and elevated emotion is what gets us to that place of pure creation and endless possibilities and all of his meditations wherein we go into a state of no time, no thing, no one and from there we're just the field and we're more particle than matter, we're more wave than then you know it's this really juicy gooey stuff that um, I am so fueled by and a lot of law of attraction stuff but then he has a lot of scientific research and backing so that's really motivational for me in the morning that helps me and I kind of make that survive with my working out or movement or yoga now after moving it's very important for me to be sitting in meditation Now, meditation is one of the gifts of the pandemic to me that last year I finished my certification as a meditation and mindfulness coach. Sitting still in meditation is just something that has done wonders to my life from you know being able to pause when I'm triggered or step back or being able to uh, be aware of my thoughts and my emotions while I am in a physically still position. So meditation is so important for me in the morning. When I end the meditation, I usually set again another intention for the rest of my morning, for my afternoon, or the rest of my day. After meditating, I usually get a very nice smoothie or fruit bowl for my partner, Chino. And while I eat that, what I do is admin work, emails, social media, um, phone calls, texts, so all the admin stuff that help me with my business, that help me with the different projects that I still have. I still take on teaching projects, performing projects, um, now that the world has opened up, along with my one-on-one -on -one clients whom I see by Zoom or they come here in La Union for several days and I see them to work with them one-on-one -on -one in person. After I do admin work, that is time most likely that I'm meeting someone in Zoom or I am seeing clients in person, whether this is for planning, you know, future projects, or this is debriefing from previous projects, or this is um, actually seeing a person and uh, reading the tarot for them or giving them Reiki or giving them some Dali movement meditation. Now, around 12.30 to 1.30 is when I have lunch with Gina and um, I try to keep my phone off when that's the time for that. That as you know I want to emulate that feeling of we're having lunch we're in, where we're not in work mode we're in just talking mode and asking one another how was your morning or how's work after which usually I get sleepy so I do some shesta and then also an afternoon maybe I'm doing zoom or seeing clients and uh, then I'm also again feeding the cats because the cats are hungry again and I will be watering the plants outside the second time because it usually gets really really hot uh, here in La Union. For the afternoon maybe I'm on Zoom seeing clients or I'm seeing them in person. I'm just you know writing because I 
dream of writing. <laughs> writing a book. <laughs> oh shit, I said that here. I'm, I'm accountable now to that dream. <laughs> hey, and then when it is 5.30 p.m., that's usually, you know, Chino and I preparing for no more work. That's it. We're done. We're done. Finish. No more. Um, we try to make it a point that before 6, we go out, we walk out. Um, well, we feed the cats again. And then we walk out and see the sunset. And that's all we do. And no work. Try not to think of work. Try not to talk of work. And just, you know, enjoy the sunset and be as present as possible with one another. Usually, that's a time when our friends, whether they're visiting from other places or they're from here, they come here and we spend the sunset together. After the sun sets down around 7 p.m., come home. Maybe we feed some of these still hungry cats. Um, Chino usually makes dinner, and then we have dinner, and then it's time to go Netflix and chill. By 9 p.m., my phone alarms and says, No more gadgets. Time for bed. Get ready for bed. That's it. That's pretty much it. That's my usual day. And uh, there's a very, very different kind of day in life from what I've known many years back as a dance artist living in Manila in a busy city uh, wherein it's all about rehearsing with dancers or alone, preparing for a show, meeting to prepare the productions for a show, teaching in different dance studios, um, performing and, and doing a lot of that stuff and just being in traffic for <laughs> at least two hours in a day, uh, you know, just meeting one or two people in a day. This is uh, my life now as an energy healer. Um, as you can see, it can also be packed. It can also be full, especially when it's a weekend and I have a lot of clients who are coming in to have a session with me. Or if there are a lot of projects lined up and we have to kind of have a sort of regular meeting, group meeting to keep the momentum going. And even admin work and those of you who know me from my other social accounts like Facebook and Instagram, it's so important that I keep on posting something and, and you know, I'm putting up a wellness retreat here. We just recently had one two weeks ago and then we're putting up another one this August. So there's also a lot of work when you're independently producing your own stuff or when you are making a business or a living out of, out of, the spiritual services that you offer or energy healing services that you offer um, a lot of the times people just see what's on the outside or what's posted but really I would say that a lot of the work and home life and personal life are so even integrated in a way and so yeah that's it it's important for my phone to ring at 9 and say it's time for bed <laughs> it's time to sleep no more gadgets and with that being said, all I can say is if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for my next videos, please, please, please send me a direct message. I would love to hear from you. Comment below, like, hit the subscribe button. I'd love to stay in touch. I hope that this video will help you if you are a budding energy healer or, or you know, you're someone who was just into energy healing and is wondering what goes on in the life of an energy healer. I'd like to say I don't know what goes on in the life of every energy healer out there. It's always different context every time but this is my context I live by the sea I live in La Union I used to be a dance artist with a very busy hectic life that is all about using my body to perform on stage and now it's so different so I send you so much love and enjoy the rest of your day I hope that um, you use your energy well